How's it going, everybody? We are here at SeaWorld Orlando. Day two of our trip. Um, we are stopped here. It is almost nine o'clock. The park opens at nine and we are stopped at the front gates and they're not letting anyone in. I don't like, I just saw a bunch of people walk into the little booth just now. So I figured that they would have already let people in the park since the park opens in literally six minutes. So like this someone is- Someone tried to escape and then bring Like back. I think someone tried to get free parking, which <laughs> that's what I want to do. I want some free parking. Try to make a run for it. We're right back with another update right here. So apparently it is 10 to seven today. The I could hours. The hours, yeah. So um, yeah, we're- <laughs> A little early. We're an hour early. Um, well, I didn't think we were an hour early. I thought it was nine to nine today. Jeez. It's 10 to seven. What, what's up with that? There is pipeline. That is where we're gonna head first. Excited to ride this thing. Yeah, we um, haven't. We've been to SeaWorld Orlando once before, but it was before pipeline. Yeah, Icebreaker was the new coaster last time we were here but we are excited for this because I've ridden one stand-up coaster in my life and that is Mantis at Cedar Point like just a couple years after it opened up and I hated it. I was like, never again. And then when they announced this, we did a video like making fun of this. <laughs> B&M headquarters. This is SeaWorld. Oh, hi SeaWorld. What can I do for you? Bull, your worst coaster. What, our worst coaster model? Uh, we have a floor list that no one seems to like. Worse than that. What, even worse than our floorless? Um, well, we have a stand-up that absolutely everyone hated. Do you want one of those? We'll take it. Really? I think everyone was. <laughs> yeah. Because it was like stand-up coaster. Why yeah. would why would be an Embry back stand-up coaster? Because those all of the old ones are really bad. But this one is supposed to be very different from the old BM stand-up coasters. Yeah, so we're excited to try this out. Uh, and then of course, Mako, Icebreaker, um, Kraken, you know, Manta. it's Manta. He rides Manta. He rides the flying coasters. I do not. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to like be laying down and stuff like that. Um, but we got a line forming up here. Hopefully it's not too busy of a day because um, we want to get plenty of re-rides today. But the park is open for 10 hours. So it's plenty of time to get all the rides that we need. Okay, we're the first ones in line waiting to get in. So we asked, how do we get to Pipeline? Go go straight up, right, and then right, and then you're right at Pipeline. So pretty it's, simple direction. I mean, pretty right. simple. Right. right and right. So if, you, if, if we forget, then you guys have to remind us in the comment section down below how to get to Pipeline. So we are the first ones there. So we get first first uh, surfboard out of the day. Literally the first ones in the park heading to Pipeline. So we are looking forward to this. So we're looking forward to the whole day because Icebreaker was a lot of fun. And now we get to ride it without comfort collars. Yeah. Because before they had the comfort collars. And the comfort collars are not. Are not comfortable, yeah. yeah. Makes things more difficult. Um, Pipeline this way, yep. Pipeline, pipe. Oh, we didn't. Look, well, people cut through you, this is stupid. Unless you guys are watching this video. Oh, look, well, people, people that come here know their way around. That's the disadvantage of coming. It's only our second time. Yeah, only our second time at the park, so. All right, this park is living up to its tradition of not being able to find like you're not being able to find anything. All the right? pathways are very confusing here. Yeah. So we in the pipeline, we went the wrong way. Uh, so now we're no longer in front. Yeah, we were, we were in front and now we're not in front anymore because we went the wrong way. It's like hard to, hard to find stuff in this park. They offered us a map. We should have just taken the map. <laughs> well, I don't know what to do with it. I'll we'll just shove it in our pockets. We have paper maps here, which no other park has paper maps. Yeah, it's very, very rare for paper maps. But here it is, pipeline. So finally get to ride this thing. Look at that, it's a zero minute wait. They 
have a worker testing the knife. They just, just came into the station. So hopefully they're about to open it up here in a second. So we can check out pipeline. Oh, it's still five more minutes. Nice shot of icebreaker across the lake. And pipeline is a very nice looking coaster. It is. B&M's tend to be very photogenic. They might not have forces and stuff like that, but they're photogenic. So I got to give them that. All right, we are in the station a couple minutes early, so hopefully they, they get us out here shortly. This is a long train. How many rows did this? Like 35? This is a... Uh, Oh, is it just, doesn't it look long? For, like, it looks long for whatever reason. Just because it's tall, I think, I don't know. What's on? Oh, and people are already getting on. Operations are definitely on the, on the slower side for this. No, no Velocicoaster operations here. A little bit on the slower side. That's all right, so there's a nice breeze and it's nice weather. So. Yeah. We're having fun standing in line. First ever ride on Pipeline is complete. I would say, it like like the old B and M standups, it hurts your legs still a little bit. It's not it's not completely comfortable. So I would say it would make it a little bit like less of a completely marathonable ride. Yeah, because yeah, it will hurt your legs a little bit, but it's very fun. It's a very fun ride. Yeah, the, like the 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 stand up airtime is really cool. It's unique. It's a fun ride. It's a good layout. It's not like it's not like the old uh, B and M standups that were based on inversions and and all that. This is this is more of a spread out layout and a lot of fun. So definitely something that we're gonna jump back in line for right now. Yeah. They're only they're only running one train though. Yeah. So that makes a, a little bit. Yeah. That kind of sucks. It makes the line a little bit longer than it normally. I asked if they were going to add more trains later on, and they said that they'll see how the line goes. Um, so I don't know what that means because the park literally just opened and it's already a 10 minute wait. So, I mean, not that 10 minutes is a long time, but you would think they would open with two trains, like, and then add a third, if, assuming that this thing has three trains. But, um, but we did front row. So excellent. I think we're going to just jump on any row now. Yeah. Uh, it's something that I don't think it's something that that the rows matter. We'll see after we ride some different rows. All right. So we're here at the bridge that kind of leads you over towards the icebreaker area, except it's not 11 o'clock yet. So apparently the this this side of the park opens at 10 and the other side of the park opens at 11 because we were saying that we didn't see icebreaker going at all. So we were wondering why it hasn't been like, operating yet. Obviously Pipeline and Mako, Manta, like Kraken, those rides would be open. Yeah, well, I don't know about side. Mako because I don't see uh No, no Mako's open because it's on the side of the park. Okay. That I thought go, but. Okay, I uh, see Kraken going at so least all, testing. So most of the coasters would be open at 10 except for Icebreaker. Pipeline in the back row was good. We So we did it once in the front, once in the back. And I like personally, I thought it gave a little bit better airtime in the front than the back. But you uh, disagreed, I, or no? I think I don't know. I think they were both good. I think the airtime was a little bit better in the back, but there oh. was like one airtime hill in the front that like gave you good airtime at the very end. But in the back, not so much. So. No. Here we are at Mako, sporting a five-minute wait, which sounds good to me. Actually, I want zero-minute wait. That sounds even better. We're about to do our second ride on Mako. Front row, we did back row first. It is one train because the other train we saw had no seats. 
like. Another one in the... It could become a stand-up coaster. But so, lines will get a little bit longer today because of these one-train operations. But I'm helping things move along. I'm getting, I'm setting up people in, in line and getting things moving along. Like there were there were three people and then a solo person. I said, why don't the solo person go move in line, move, get in with them. So they should pay me. Should they pay me? Give me money, SeaWorld Orlando. We just got a re-ride on Mako. They let you do it one time. That's what that was our experience last time we were here. Uh, but we had to get out of the front row and go to the back row. But the station emptied out completely, so we were able to jump back on. But now we have to go back out and go all the way back through the line. Because one time, that's it. I like back row more than front of Mako, but they're both really good. Like every air treadmill gives you really good air time. Which is how Mako should be. There's not, there's not one hill that misses on that ride. So, and the fact that it doesn't have a rattle like Diamondback definitely makes it my top one. I, I, it, it's official now. I was, I was back and forth, but yeah, I, it I, is official I like now. They go a little bit more, but they're, they're really close. But yeah. And still, my least favorite is still Nitro. Go figure. Heading back to Icebreaker. Got to check it out with the comfort, without the comfort collars. Comfort collars are something that I'm not just Premier, but a lot of Premier rides do. And it's just these, like, almost, they almost look like over the shoulder harnesses that come down, except they aren't a restraint. They don't actually, they don't actually do anything. Uh, to secure you into the ride or anything like that. So essentially they're pointless. And they're just a big hassle to get like on and off. But they're very uncomfortable. Yeah, I didn't I didn't find them like extremely uncomfortable. I mean they're they're not they're not the worst thing ever, but they're uncomfortable and very difficult to figure out. Yeah that so. that was my biggest thing. And this is their kids area. We already got the credit here, which we last time we were here we waited a little while for for it. Yeah they have a kitty coaster and we were, we were the, the two, the two grown-ups. Well, he's a little kid, but we were the two people waiting while everyone else was waiting with like little kids and stuff like that. But you gotta get the credit. We gotta get the credit, but we're skipping it today because we don't need it. Take note, Cedar Fair. Look at that large. And Six Flags, too. And Six Flags, yeah. Every park except for Hershey Park. Take note of these giant water cups. Hershey Park has big water cups like this. Yeah. But, um... They, like, yeah, look at that! Good. Look at that! That's a nice... That's not a sip of water. That's a nice... That's a nice amount of water right there. And especially, like, down here in Florida, I guess you need something like that. Icebreaker is a walk-up. That's always good. No comfort collars. We have not ridden this without the comfort collars, so I'd say it'll be a, a, a better experience just because you want to get like just 
just because I had such a difficult time getting the thing on and off. But I think they're only running one train, maybe? And this is a very, we said it was a very, like, it's almost like a family version of Pantheon, and we wrote this before we wrote Pantheon. So we'll see how this is after we wrote Pantheon. Yeah, yeah. Because now we've written, obviously, the bigger and better version of this. But I don't think that this is going to disappoint them. No. So you say Icebreaker is a back row ride? I say definitely. Airtime is way better. Airtime is definitely better. What I say is wrong with the back row is the fact that I think you actually have less leg room. Like Premier trains are miserable as it is, but even in the back row of Icebreaker, oh my God, it's like impossible to get in and out of even more so than normal. And like the shin restraint was like pushing down extra hard on my shin, so. It kind of uh, kind of painful a couple times because you do get some extreme ejector ejector in the back row. Which way are we going? I don't know. I was gonna ask you. Oh well, you said to go this way, so. No, I said. Yeah, yeah. back there. I said to go this way, but now. Oh, okay. Well, we're gonna try to figure out where we're gonna go next. grill just had some plant-based chorizo and I had a bowl with Spanish rice and refried beans he has his uh, vegan chorizo over loaded fries and that and we uh we lucked out we got some uh, vouchers because there's a little bit of confusion about where we could eat as far as like with vegan stuff so we got probably about $50 worth of food look he's back we got about $50 or so worth of food for free. So I will take that any day of the week. How's the food at least? Good? Mine was excellent, but I just put, I put too much hot sauce. I got like, I started boom, 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 way too much. And so now my mouth is burning. But it tastes good at least. Look guys, theming. Here we are at Manta, b and Flying Coaster. And we both love this ride, don't we? I mean, like, it's one of my favorites. <laughs> Maybe it's you like ridden it. it. Oh, yeah. I didn't actually ride it. Okay, it says, okay, so it does say something else other than 20 minutes. Earlier it was 20 minutes. And then, last time we were here, it said 20 minutes, and it was just like a five minute wait. So we were pretty convinced that it says nothing but. 20 minutes, that's the only time that it says. So how did you like Manta again? I loved it. You loved it? It's a great ride. Okay. Absolutely. Pretzel loop is insane. Okay. But I have a confession to make everyone. You guys should all be proud of me. I rode Manta. Not lying, I actually actually did it. Um, but my eyes closed the entire way up. Like going up, like a Vacoma flying Dutchman, you go up backwards so it's not quite as bad. 
B&M flying coasters, you like lay, lay down going up the hill. And I was like, I never wanted to be like facing straight down and looking at where I'm gonna be plummeting to my death. So I kept my eyes closed. I know that's not a good enthusiast of me. That's not very enthusiastic, like and I don't care. Too bad, people. But now we're gonna uh, go. What do you want to do, Kraken? Uh, yeah, let's do Kraken. Okay. So unfortunately, Journey to Atlantis is going through some yearly maintenance. You got some painting going on. So we rode it before, and it was fun. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was fantastic. Sucks that we can't ride it this time, but we've ridden it, and I, I really like it. I think we're gonna do Kraken next, but first I wanna get some water. Very thirsty, so I wanna see if they have some uh, water cups. First to get some water at High Seas Market. The Kraken Station, it is living up to everything else at SeaWorld Orlando today, and it is one train ops. Everything except for Manta was one train ops today which I guess can be expected in winter months when they send the other trains out for maintenance and start doing stuff to them. And it's a pretty long ride too, so it's taking a little while. And one thing unique that they do that I've never really seen at any other parks, they have quick queue only lanes. So quick queue is their fast lane, skip the line system at any SeaWorld parks or Busch Gardens parks. And it uh, it helps you like save some time. But I've never seen where they get your own lines. Usually it's just like you join the regular station but skip a lot of the line. All right, Kraken has a delay. They had a pretty hard stop on the mid course. I'm saying it's ghost, I'm saying it's ghost train. He says it's not a ghost train. All right, we just got off of Kraken. I say get rid of all floorless B&M floorless coasters. They're worthless. I know you say you don't get the head banging anymore, but I don't. But I don't like love floorless. Coasters. I don't know. Whatever. But I'm not like a. I don't get extreme head banging, but enough where I don't really enjoy them that much. Track it was special. It was like, we rode it before, but I didn't remember too much of it. It's it a very forceful ride. It is very forceful. It's a better flow. But anyway, the story is that as we showed that they were stuck on the mid course while we were next in line. So then they, they got them off the mid course. They cycled through one test and then they loaded us on after that. And we went through, we went through uh, just fine. And then we were about to get some footage of Kraken. So if you guys don't get footage of Kraken in this video, it's because, yeah. it's because of was, what just happened. I was waiting there, ready to go, and it got stuck on the It got, course. again. Okay. So it skipped ours, it skipped ours. It let us get through just fine because, I mean, obviously they know who we are. So they wanted us to have a good experience, but now they're stuck with everyone else. But. Um, we got a few more hours left here in the park, so now it's just time to get any, in any re-rides that we want to do, even though we've already gotten a ton of re-rides on some things. Manta, and then, more Manta. I don't know. I don't know if I could do that again. But now it's just time to uh, kind of relax and, and take take our time and get a couple re-rides that we want to do. It's a miracle Mako added another train. Two train ops, that's why the station is empty right now. One real quick note about this park. Really no flat rides. Like like almost except for like the kids area, some kids like small kitty rides. No flat rides. So they need something like a scream and swing or uh like even a couple like like old traditional rides or something like that. They have observation tower if you count that. Nah, that's not really a flat ride. But really SeaWorld, right. take note, you guys need some flat rides. <laughs> Bush Gardens starting to get a couple flat rides. Yeah, well, yeah. So why can't a, you guys? That was the problem with Bush Gardens Tampa in particular. Yeah. They didn't have many, but now they're starting to get some. Yeah, so now SeaWorld Orlando, it's your turn. We got a show going on. We got some, we got Big Bird. Big Bird. Just the way he is. 
but Big Bird does roller skate. Big Bird roller skates. So we're just sitting over here and we got an egret, we got rabbits, squirrels, a white iris, um, and some blackbirds. I don't know, they, they went away, but it's a whole Disney movie back here. Icebreaker is a complete mess. Like, look at this station. There's no one working, keeping people in order in the station. So it's a complete mess. Operations, complete mess. One train ops. Look, we're at we're at one minute right now, and we're not even close to this finish. The whole process of checking seatbelts and then coming through and checking restraints, doing restraints is not the best way to do things. But look, they're about to. Two minutes and 36 seconds, new record. Lightning fast. Our day is winding down here. Park's gonna be closing soon. Plus, we just waited. Plus what? Plus, we're getting tired and hungry. Yeah, we're very tired. We just, yeah. we just waited like half an hour for icebreaker. Yeah, that was crazy. Um, but luckily, this park, if it's a if it's a slow day, the line that gets the shortest wait is Mako, and Mako is the best ride in the park. So that's very convenient. Now this is gonna be our eighth? Tenth. Tenth, oh yeah, tenth. Tenth ride of the day, which ties for the most we've ever gone on one coaster with Jersey Devil, which obviously we got 10 as well. So we uh, got a lot of rides on this today, which is nice, but we're gonna be winding down our day, like I said, maybe depending on how long we wait for this, we might do well, one other ride. It's a walk on. Oh, it's a walk-on, okay. So we'll probably do one other ride after this. Manta. And then call it quits. We ended Mako Day. Did we, did we pass the retire record with Jersey Devil with 10? Did we or did not? Well, we did. We did and a little bit extra. We rode Mako a total of 15 times today. And one, I, five, 15. And I think the last four or five times we didn't even leave the station. We just bounced around between yeah, I mean, I, I like back row and second to back row. Five times. Yeah. And, and yeah, they let you re-ride and all that. So Yeah, so that was uh definitely a good time. Everything else we got in decent amount of times. Uh icebreaker we got in like three times. Pipeline three times or something. Lines were pretty slow uh, or pretty low today. Yeah. Um most of the play, most of the rides were one train ops. Except for um, Mako later in the day. Mako and Manta. Manta, yeah. Uh, but, but everything else, one train, but sort of. Yeah. Um, but that is, I think, it for our day here. Because we got uh, a restaurant to go to. So we are done. I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Appreciate it a bunch. If you guys haven't already, please go down and subscribe. Yeah. We appreciate it. And if you want to go one step above subscribing, you can be like one of these wonderful people right here. They joined our channel membership. Yeah. They get shout outs every single video. Exclusive content on the studio. Partners uh, get even extra content and like, um, and early content. Yeah, so, uh, and then it helps us out a ton. So thank you guys so much. And you know what? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll say this. One of our one of our members, we're talking about members right now. One of our members 
right here happens to be in SeaWorld Orlando. How you guys doing? How's it going, man? All right, say hi. Hi. <laughs> so you can be like one of these great people right here. Help us out so much. And uh, what, tell, give give an endorsement for a studio, for a member. Oh, oh. Be, being a member is great. You get all the exclusive stuff. I knew these guys were coming down here uh, on a flight because I logged into my YouTube and saw a members only picture saying, hey, we're coming down here. And I messaged them and we met up today. So Look at that. Become Good stuff. a member. There you go. You heard it here first. So that's it for this video. See you guys next time right here on Beach Cliff Studios.